Geeks TV. This is Two Geeks TV. You are watching Two Geeks TV. Hi, gang. Mean Gene Okerlund from World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. And you're watching Two Geeks TV. It's all over the place. YouTube, it's on your computer. You'll even find it in the shoebox in the closet. Hey, I'm Trish Stratus, and this is Two Geeks TV. Keep watching, because Stratisfaction is guaranteed. Oh! That's pretty good hoeing, fellas. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, this is Sean once again for Two Geeks TV, and I got us with three today, a legend in the industry of comic books himself, Mr. David Ross. Dave, it's a real honor that you actually took a few minutes to now talk with us about your, your works that. in the past and give us a little look-see in the future. Absolutely. So let's take us down a little bit of memory lane and lead up to where we are now. Uh, what can you tell me about the very first work that you have worked on? I did. Uh, I was working on, uh, early on, was working on a, a small Marvel project with Chris Claremont. Yep. It was about Carol Danvers, and it ended up being uh, reproduced in a, I think it was a Marvel fanfare issue. Uh, that was the first, cutting my teeth, doing some early Marvel work. That was great. And then I got called over to DC Comics, did a lot of work over at DC for a couple of years. Yep. And then uh, got to work with... Uh, uh, let me see, Alpha Flight, so that was a, a run on Alpha Flight over at Marvel, and yeah. I was working with Bill Mantlow, who was the writer, and he was actually the one who was incidental in getting me in there. He talked to his editor, Carl Potts at the time, and said uh, he'd seen some of my work in some smaller publications. I think he saw some of the the uh, Carol Danvers piece, yep. and, uh, and I got into working on Alpha Flight, and that was great, and one thing led to another after that. Well, that's, uh, that's the thing that's funny that you mentioned that, because sort of, actually it was Alpha Flight that caught my attention to your art back right. in the day. That's how I got introduced to your artwork, well, which was yeah. actually Alpha Flight. So, a wonderful run working on that. Oh, yeah. I love the series, uh, and teetering seems a bit off a little bit more now, but right. back then it was a very solid series, I found. Yeah. The writers were good, yourself were phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And even the the anchor you were working with at it the was time. Still relatively early on, we yep. were working off of what John Byrne had established on the early issues of the book. Yep. And uh, we were just having a lot of fun with the characters, and it was just a, a really good book to work on. And of course, it, that extra kick of being Canadian and working on a characters, or Canadian characters, exactly uh, for a big American company, was just a lot of fun. Now, coming into more later and more modern issues that you're working on, uh, give us a little taste. Where are you going for, for uh, you know, Alpha Flight, Spider-Man? You can see some work here, like you said, you've worked even on uh, Star Wars and uh, everything absolutely. else. Absolutely, I've been doing uh, quite a few projects uh, back on the uh, Dark Horse run on Star Wars books. Yep. Uh, I did an interactive, I did a teaser for an interactive web game, Knights of the Old Republic, and yep. that was put out a, a few months before the the actual game was issued. So what? What I was working on with that book was the origin of one of the principal characters in the game, Darth Thanaton. And so this is an origin story of this character, and it was a lot of fun to work on that. We were putting it out in seven-page installments, and they were coming out weekly, yeah. uh, and we were getting immediate feedback from the fans. And that was a, a new experience for me. I hadn't put out a webcomic before to see that kind of immediate interactive uh, impact from the, from the fans. It was a great experience. The book came out in hard copy about a year later and was compiled into a, a trade paperback. But for a while it was only on the web. Hmm. That's a good thing that you actually brought up the fact that of the e-comic because I like asking artists this all the time, uh, the future of the industry. Mm -hmm. And I've been noticing that a lot of works are now shifting away from the hard copy mm -hmm. and shifting more towards the way of e-comics and uh, online issues, and since they are mass-produced quicker, and there's, uh, like DC for instance, have been known for doing multiple issues now, weekly issues, like the uh, Batman 66 and so forth, I do believe is a weekly issue and stuff like that. Do you feel this is going to be a, a blow to the industry for the uh, the car cover uh, versions, like your paperback trades, or do you think this is not going to affect it at all, and just another convenient way of getting comics? It may be another convenient way of, of, of doing the comics. I think the hard copy, the appeal of the hard copy will still last for, for quite a while. Yeah. I think there are certain
particularly for the younger reader, is there certain advantages to being able to have a hard copy um, still? And I think there's a, as much as we enjoy the immediacy of what goes on on the web, I think there's a certain appeal, attractiveness still to the tactile holding the product in your hands and leafing through back and forth, not having to scroll, but to simply be able to flip back and forth and immediately see something here, then something over there, then something back there, and you being uh, very uh, obviously completely in control of the process. Yeah. To me, I enjoy that. And as far as it affecting sales and what the future is, I think my main concern, if I have a concern, is that for the, for the general reader of comic books, they have a lot of other interests as well. I mean, some of that's us are true. true geeks, and we're just so into sci-fi and fantasy and comics. Yep. That that's all we just do 24/7. Uh, but there's a whole rank and file of people out there who who have a broader base of interest. They like their comics, they like their sci-fi hit, but they they go out and they do the sports, and they've got the music that they're into, and they they have a whole sort of varied life. So for them, there's a little piece of their entertainment pie that is sci-fi and, and and comics adventure. And my concern is that with all of the movies now that are coming out and the regular TV shows and the quality of the effects on those shows, that maybe their piece of that pie is going to get taken up with all that stuff and there'll be nothing left for them for the comics. Yep. To me, that's the biggest concern I have for the future of comics. And as you know, the comics are the wellspring. The comics are where the ideas get to be played out relatively extensively yep. to see whether a thing's going to fly or not. And then, yes, after a while, if a thing is successful in the comics, then it's a good place to, to parlay that into a TV series or parlay that into a movie or a movie franchise, as so many of them are now. But, but really, it starts with uh, the relatively low cost of preparing something in a comic book. So if a comic book goes by the way of the dinosaur, that venue for trying out new product also goes. And I think there's a real vested interest, even at the higher levels, in keeping the comics around just so that you will have this place to play out ideas and not spend great gobs of money doing it. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good point of view, actually. And I agree fully on that, believe it or not. Um, it's just one of those things where I know a lot of people always had that question and brought brilliant in their mind, and I love asking everybody their point of view on it. And uh, I agree with you fully, well, you know, <laughs> completely. It's you and me. Yeah. We're there for the comics, we're yeah. there for the movies, we're there for the TV shows, we'll take all we can get. That's right. But we also have to remember that we're a small percentage of the overall population. Uh, and, and the rest of them out there are in for a piece of it. Well, anything to get something to sell somewhere, and that's pretty much what it is. Absolutely. It's still it's still industry. Oh, yeah. So let's push ourselves just a little bit further on now. Yeah, let's carry and on. And tell me, what's the future for you, my friend? Well, right now I've been doing a lot of teaching, and uh, I've actually been teaching for well, quite a few years. On the side, I've been doing comics as well, so it's yep. always trying to juggle both careers, both wear both hats at the same time, in a sense. Uh, but for the last oh, year and a half or so, I've been preparing an instructional book on drawing the human figure from the imagination. Yeah. And it's a big project which is going to be coming out this year uh, at the end of July. So it'll be there in time for the new school term in September. And it's a book literally uh, titled Freehand Figure Drawing for Illustrators. And uh, originally we were starting it out as a focus on comic book, comic book illustration. Yep. But as discussions carried on with the editor, and it's being published by a major uh, company, it's Penguin Random House. Yeah, I know Penguin. Publishing. The book will be distributed through Amazon and through all the usual sources. Plus, of course, it will be in the bookstores all over. Um, the price point is very reasonable on this. It's been priced to be very accessible for students, so this is a good thing. Uh, retailing here in, in Canada for $26.99, which for that kind of art instruction book yep. is very good. And it's a big book. It's 208 pages, crammed with a lot of information. Uh, so I've tried to be... Uh, as concise as I can and as helpful as I can in breaking down the steps for the student so that they can work from essentially starting from ground zero where you, you really don't have a lot of information, don't have a lot of knowledge, I'm assu not assuming knowledge on the part of the student. They can come in and just start from scratch with this book and then work their way through the drawing step by step, which I think is, is needed in the marketplace right now. 
Well, with the industry the way it is, and it is expanding in certain fields and so forth, we do need new artists. And you opening the door and paving the way in such a way, you're helping the industry grow your a own way. A lot of so. traditional schools teach a process that involves heavily involves using models, and there's nothing wrong with learning from life, absolutely. No. But really, to be a comic book artist, and therefore to be a good overall illustrator, you need to be able to just draw from the imagination and be able to get it looking right. And I think these days, that's a skill which is going by the way, because it's really hard to find places that really teach that. Well, they, they always taught you back, well, I remember when I was being taught how to draw back in the day, and everything was always on points of perspective, line of view, line of Support. sight, er, yeah. you know, point A to point B. It was very mathematical. Yeah. Um, and then uh, later on, they the, the got away from that, and it was more loopy and uh, more fluent in flow than yeah. mathematical lines. You need a little of both, which they is do. interesting. I mean, and I always, in the book, I stress the point you should start with a loose, rough, flowing sketch. Just let get something down on paper that gets a feel for where you want to go with it, but then start to apply real structure to that sketch, yeah. to refine and build something which uh, which follows the, the flow of the sketch, but has a much more uh, three-dimensional quality to it. And that's, it's an old process. It's a process that the illustrators were using from the turn of the last century onward, yeah. and they did all of this amazing work through the 19, early 1900s and up until the 1960s and 70s, this amazing pantheon of incredible artists, they worked with this method. And many of those were the early comic book artists as well. So they brought that method from illustration into, into comics, and it's the methods that most of us have learned one way or the other, whether we've got a little bit of it here and a little bit of it there, we put it all together over time, what I'm trying to do is make, put it all together into one book so that we can have it right there. You won't have to catch a snatch here and a snatch there. You'll have it right there in front of you. So for the next generation coming through, they'll have that as a tool that to work with. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's pretty much the amount of time we have for today. We got one more? Okay, once again, my partner wishes to ask a question. Oh. All right, let's carry on. Hi, this is Victor from Two Geeks. I just wanted to know, you were talking about that book that you have out. Uh, is that available right now at Indigo and uh, Chapters? No. It's going to be coming out at the uh, towards the end of the summer. It's the, the release date, official release date of the book is July 28th. Okay. And it will be available in the stores and it will be available um, on the internet. You, there will also be, as so many are now, there will be an e-book edition as well as a trade paperback edition of the, of the book. You heard it. Go out and get the book. Thank you very much, sir. You're quite welcome. I, yeah. My hands are full. <laughs> All right.